I defined myself as someone who played a lot of sports, uh, was active. I was always a cadet, and I loved cadets. I loved the lifestyle, I loved everything about it. So it just seemed like a natural progression for me to go from accomplished cadet to soldier. But uh, frankly, that wasn't in the cards for me. It was like three or four runs into the night and uh, my sled had just spun out. The realization that it was something big came instantly. I just didn't know that it would be something life-changing. Everything I'd worked towards up until that point, all the plans I'd made, everything I'd wanted to do with my life, was kind of shattered. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but more so I didn't know who I was anymore. We had kind of gotten to the stage where um, Alex in a chair had become real, like that was our reality and that's what we had gotten used to and, and we were progressing and, 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 and seeing that. At that point, I would, I, I'd give up the world to be able to walk again, so I jumped at the opportunity to be able to try this thing out. Some people um, who have very little chance um, to walk again in terms of current technology and, um, and medical knowledge feel that they at least have that opportunity to, to get on their feet, um, look people in the eye, hug family members, um, so there's a, I think there's a good psychological benefit and other individuals with incomplete spinal cord injuries that um, have the opportunity to potentially recover, um, for them it's, it's, it's offered uh, you know, huge opportunity and, and open doors and we've seen people that uh, have recovered and, and uh, moved away from the exoskeleton and away from external equipment and are back on their feet walking. We were learning about the exoskeleton um, as Alex was learning about the exoskeleton. Um, so, so there was that element of you know just uh, you know um, kind of awe to see somebody um, with a with a complete spinal cord injury stand and, and walk in an exoskeleton, um, and for Alex to see you know uh, how determined he was to do it and uh, and and how good he felt I think to, to get up and stand and walk, um, it, just a fantastic moment. For him to have that moment where, you know, I walked into school, I'm going to walk out of school, right? And so having that moment where we could see him achieve and, and do something that everybody thought was impossible, and yet it's not impossible. Alex McEwen. I remember taking the first few steps and there was just silence because I was still behind the curtain. And, and then I took the one step outside the curtain and all I hear is people screaming. After my injury, I never imagined walking across the stage for graduation. I expected to roll across it. And to be able to walk across it and actually go and walk and grab my diploma was insane. I will never be able to recreate that feeling as long as I live. Having him stand and be taller than me as a, as a mom have my son, who's always going to be my baby, be this man that can engulf me and hug me and we can feel that, it's too precious for words. We're very realistic and, and we deal with exactly what's in front of us and in front of us if it's not walking that's what we deal with. But we always tell people never give up hope because you don't know what the future will hold, you don't know where technology is going to go um, and, and hope is super powerful. The people that I met within the Alberta healthcare system really shaped me into who I am and uh, put me on the right track after having my injury. With the way technology is going and with the way these researchers work and how hard and how committed they are, um, I don't think it's going to be the last stage I walk across. Together, we do amazing things every day.